Reproductive tract scores determine a heifer's reproductive maturity. This procedure was developed because directly measuring puberty in a group of heifers is both time-consuming and labor-intensive. If you're going to AI some heifers or getting ready to breed some heifers, we may uh, track score them and, and those that don't have an adequate track score. In other words, their uterus and their ovaries aren't active and haven't developed to the level that they're supposed to. Uh, we may choose not to, to spend expensive semen or something like that trying to AI them. Reproductive tract scores range from 1 to 5, with 1 indicating an immature reproductive tract and 5 indicating a cycling heifer. It's simply a subjective estimate of sexual maturity based on ovarian follicular development and palpable size and tone of the reproductive tract. We typically track score from a 1 to a 5 with a 1 track score 1 meaning the heifer is not doing anything, the ovaries are very small, not active and then a five will be a heifer that's already ovulated and has and should be getting ready to breed pretty soon. What we find too is you can't just look at the heifers superficially and say you know the big heifers are further along in their program whereas the uh, the uh, smaller heifers are not. Sometimes the, the smaller heifers will reach puberty just as early or earlier than the bigger ones. So size is, is not a reliable indicator of heifer being ready to breed always. She's going to be a five. She's got good ovaries. Her track is very firm and large and uh, feels good. So she's got good tone. She'll have a good score. She's going to be a track score of five. She actually has a fairly small track and uh, both ovaries are fairly small. So she's going to have a low from what we call track score and not be very good for, uh, for breeding yet. She's going to need some more development time. If estrus synchronization is not going to be used, consider culling heifers with a reproductive track score less than three, especially if the genetic value of these heifers is marginal. If estrus will be synchronized using MGA or a controlled intervaginal drug release device or CEDAR, a track score of two may be acceptable. It is critical to use an experienced, reliable technician for reproductive track scoring. The measurement is usually taken at the same time pelvic area is assessed. Both reproductive track scores and pelvic area measurements should be taken prior to breeding. Also, if you do it a little earlier in the season, we're getting prepared to, um, to manage some heifers, say as yearlings, you can track score them early on and take the ones that have the smaller track scores or that aren't quite as far along in their development and approaching puberty as well and uh, feed them, adjust them, their feed and their diet a little bit better, uh, push them along to catch up with the heifers that are already developing better. According to the Beef Improvement Federation, most calving difficulty or dystocia occurs in two-year-old first calf heifers. Research indicates that disproportion between calf size and size of the female birth canal is a major contributor to calving difficulty. As a result, producers may use yearling pelvic measurements as a culling tool to reduce the potential incidence and severity of calving difficulty among first calf heifers in their herds. Pelvic area measurements are simply a measurement of the size of the birth canal. They are used to relate the size of a heifer in her pelvic area to the potential size of an easily deliverable calf. Yearling pelvic measurements should be taken between 320 and 410 days of age and before breeding. Estimated pelvic area is the product of the vertical and horizontal measurements. So you take the vertical measurement and multiply it by the horizontal measurement to come up with the pelvic area. We're also going to measure the pelvis using a rice pelvimeter and we can show you this here in a little bit. But it's, um, it's a device used to measure the size of the pelvis and kind of help us predict if we might have um, calving issues. Uh, the smaller, some folks choose to, to cull a lower per percentage of ones that have the smallest pelvises. Some just use it as a management technique, um, depending on your herd, and uh, maybe wait a little longer to breed a heifer with a small pelvis, or um, like I say, cull them or uh, give them a little more time. She's going to be about uh, 15 centimeters mm -hmm. tall by about 12 wide, so 15 by 12 on her. This is a rice pelvimeter, and um, it's got a scale on this back side. So as you squeeze it down, I can show you. As you squeeze it, 
as you squeeze it inside the pelvis, you can kind of get an idea that we can measure. So we, the taller it is, the further we're able to squeeze and so on. It's kind of logical. It's just a caliper type device. And then the scale that we measure over here is in centimeters. And what you can do is take the width and the height and calculate a pelvic area. You can actually, using a formula, get a, a calculate a rough idea of how large what weight calf that this, this heifer or this cow would be able to, to give birth to. So kind of help you predict dystosis. One of the problems you'll find is some farmers, when we first started doing this, would just cull the bottom end or the ones with the smaller pelvises. And what that ultimately leads to is just picking for larger larger cattle. So you have to take into, into account not just the size of the pelvis, but the size of the pelvis in relation to the heifer. To, to avoid just picking for bigger and bigger framed cows, because obviously a, you know, a huge cow is going to have a bigger pelvis than a little one. So you've got to be sure and calculate, take those calculations into, into account as well. To determine the size of an easily deliverable calf, divide the pelvic area measurement by the ratio as determined from the chart that appears here that uses age and weight of the heifer. For example, a 900 pound yearling heifer with a pelvic area of 170 square centimeters should be able to deliver a 71 pound calf without assistance. The other thing we'll do while we're measuring pelvis is, is try to uh, take into account shape. So one that's really tall but narrow is a cow that's gonna give you some trouble or, or the converse, if one's really wide and short, um, that can be some trouble as well.